Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I make my brief intervention on this bill, I would like to take the opportunity to extend sincere condolences to a member of my community who passed away tragically last week. Um, he, were, you know, he left his home very early to went and do an electrical job, and you know, he was electrocuted, Mr. Speaker. So I want to send condolences to his father, Gregory, better known as Bob, his mother, Molin, um, and his entire family and friends. Um, Mr. Speaker, he, he was known as McLean Joseph, better known as Doc or Cole Cole. So um, my condolences to him and his family. Mr. Speaker, the bill before us, pension amendment bill, Mr. Speaker, and as a member of the opposition, I have to support such an amendment to the bill, Mr. Speaker, and particularly so because as a member of the opposition, we have been clamoring for a very long time for the government to take heed of inflationary prices, Mr. Speaker, and the effects of high cost of living. And so this is a very good um, you know, amendment, Mr. Speaker. However, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to mention, you know, the, the, the category of people that would be affected and, and, and how their lives, you know, are impacted, Mr. Speaker. Because these people, Mr. Speaker, are not people who go on lavish vacations or, you know, have, have, have exotic, um, you know, plans or, or, or expensive vehicles. These are people who take public transport. We know public transport went up, Mr. Speaker. These are people who cook on gas, Mr. Speaker. They don't go to dinners. We know the cost of cooking gas has gone up, Mr. Speaker. These are people who pay electricity. The cost of electricity has gone up, Mr. Speaker. These are people, Mr. Speaker, who buy limited groceries. We know groceries have gone up. Mr. Speaker, these are people who, who would be more vulnerable to seeking medical supplies, the medication, Mr. Speaker, and medication has gone up. We know, I expect to hear from the other side that the government has put in place for medical supplies to be made available, but Mr. Speaker, most times, and I hate from the people who are affected, they go to the public health facilities and the medication that they require is not available. So they have to go to the private pharmacies, and of course, they have to pay the higher costs. And in all of that, Mr. Speaker, the pensions are affected by the 2.5% increase, Mr. Speaker. So these people, while they will be getting a, a slight increase, which we welcome, Mr. Speaker, I believe there's a lot more that can be done, and I'm hoping that the government looks at other ways to support the vulnerable, the marginalized, and people who have been affected. Because, Mr. Speaker, when we were, when we were in office, Mr. Speaker, we all know what this government, our government had to, had, had to grapple with, with, this, with, the, with the onslaught of COVID, Mr. Speaker. We know that. Of course everything is COVID. Don't try to hide behind that. COVID was a serious thing. Similarly, similarly to everything was a financial crisis at one point in time. So, Mr. Speaker, and I see, Mr. Speaker, our government made sure that NIC paid people who were impacted. Even those who were not paying NIC, Mr. Speaker, there was a special arrangement were made, Mr. Speaker, for the people to have gotten um, um, support, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our government also made a very, very strategic and important move, Mr. Speaker, where we waived outstanding medical bills, Mr. Speaker. You can imagine the amount of money that was outstanding, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I do support and I do hope that in the coming weeks um, we see a lot more um, as, it relates to, as it relates to the government trying to assist people who are significantly infected, particularly with the onslaught of inflation. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.